Welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the Gospel today, Jesus praises a dishonest steward who is nonetheless creative in storing up future treasure for himself. Jesus wishes his disciples had the same creativity and energy in their own desire for the treasures and the coming of God's kingdom. This celebration is for all of us, regardless of our age, orientation, race, whether we worship regularly or only when we can, whether we embrace the life of the church or struggling to find God in the midst of it all. Jesus comes to all of us, saints and sinners alike this day. To spread this good news is the mission of the church, and we open wide our doors to all who come here to pray. Your donations to support retired priests may be placed in the regular collection basket today. Additional envelopes for this important collection are available at the doors of the church. Thank you for your generosity. Our celebrant for this Mass is our pastor, Father Mike Vetrano. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join in singing our entrance hymn, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. Once again, that is, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. A special welcome today to all of our young confirmandi, those who will be confirmed here this fall, or here at this Mass with us today, and going to have the first of their convocations toward that great sacrament. It's such an important day for the Church, first of all. None of us can be Christians without the gifts of the Spirit. None of us can be a force in the world without receiving the blessing of God. And for these young people to be preparing the, for that great day of the bestowal of the Spirit on them is really wonderful. And, and of course, then the, the second thing is it's such a, a great affirmation of them, how important they are to the church, how important they are to the life of this community. And we're really happy to be celebrating that sacrament together with them this year. As we gather today, we hear the gospel talk to us about our own efforts to be Christians, to be not just people who avoid evil, but people who are passionate for building God's kingdom, just like a steward who you'll hear about in the gospel today. So let's pray and, and ask the mercy of God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us praise our God.
take a moment now to bow our heads in prayer, to be quiet within, that we're ready to hear the word of God today. O oh God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law on the command of love of you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain everlasting life. For this we ask through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain and the Sabbath that we may display the wheat. We will diminish the ephah, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life 
in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth, it is my wish then that in every place that men should pray lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said to him, what's this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you will no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I will do when I am removed from my stewardship that they may welcome me into their homes. And so he called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first one he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your note, sit down quickly, write one for 50. Then to another steward he said, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said, here is your note, sit down quickly, write one for 80. And the master commended the dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with each other than the children of the light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters will be also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters will be dishonest in great ones. If, therefore, you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, who will trust you with true wealth? And if you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful gospel for a day when we're working on a a journey to confirmation. Um, It's a wonderful gospel for all of us to hear who are trying to live lives as Christians in the world. And it challenges something in us, and what it challenges in us is is the idea that a lot of people have is that the defining thing about our faith, our Christianity, our Catholicism, our religion, a defining thing is what we don't do. You know, you meet people all the time who come in or talk to you and say, "Uh, I'm a really good Christian, I don't kill anybody, I don't steal, 
I don't do any of those bad things. What do you do, though? Is there anything defining that, that's changed, that's different in your life because of this faith, because of your, your Christianity? And that's what Jesus is getting at today. And, and if you look through the Gospels, he's constantly trying to elevate people's thinking in that way. People come up to him and say, you know, um, they'll come up to Jesus and they'll say, I know, the law teaches an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Jesus says, never mind an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Whoever grows angry with a brother is liable to judgment. Whoever is cross and insensitive, I want you not to just do eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. I want you to truly love each other. Turn your back, your shoulder, your cheek to injury and be different. Do something very, very different. And he wants to see that the disciples, now these are people who are following him, and why are they following him? They're hoping that he is going to elevate their whole way of being religious people. He's going to bring a reform, a newness, a breath of fresh air to the Judaism that they have been practicing for so, so long. And, and he's challenging them to say, I want you to start doing that. I want you to get involved. And he tells them this story about a steward, right? Great story about a steward who's been dishonest and he can see that he's going to get fired. And the steward thinks to himself, oh boy, what do you think when you get fired? Now what? Now what? You can't dig. <laughs> too, too weak to dig, not strong enough. I'm ashamed. I'm not going to go begging. I got to do something here. I got I to gotta plan my future. I got to get on this. And so he calls in the people that he's been working with for years. And he starts reducing their obligations, their debts. Now, some people say he was just really giving away his share of the commission. Some biblical scholars say, no, it was worse than that. He was actually cheating, cheating the master over again. But in a puzzling way, Jesus commends him. Why? Not because he's dishonest, not because he's doing anything wrong, and that, that's not the spirit of the gospel. But he says, but he was, he was thinking about his future and how he could work himself into the good graces of the people that he's been with for years, and he's thinking about doing something creative and, and taking good care of, of his future, and, and so he is not passive but active in an amazing kind of way. And do you ever think that that's really what the gospel is about? That that's really what we're supposed to be doing? I mean, so many times people talk about Catholicism as if we're defined by what we don't do. Nope, Catholics are at this, Catholics are at that, Catholics are at the other thing. What are we for? What's the passion? What's the world-changing part? That's really where the Holy Spirit, that's where the power of God really comes in. So I'm going to tell you a little story here, and I want you to think about this a lot. It's a, just a great story. So uh, uh, a friend of mine in the Adirondacks is a, a folk singer. It's tough to have a folk singer for a mom because they're always writing songs about you. And uh, her name is Peggy, and, and her daughter, she was watching her daughter one day. They're, she's playing soccer. And, and they would get her team, her daughter's team is getting beat, the daughter's doing terrible. She's getting tired. And she's looking out on the field, and she can see her daughter, like, little by little, getting more and more and more deflated. You know, she's just giving up. There's no energy. She's not running hard. She's not trying. She's just done. We lost, finished. And, and at one point, she can see her daughter come over to the sideline. She thinks, like, she's going to ask that they take her out. And so she goes over, right? She goes over and meets her daughter coming off the field, and she goes to her, get that fire burning in your belly, baby. Get that fire burning in your belly, baby. Get that fire burning in your belly, cause the game ain't over yet. <laughs> get that fire burning in your belly, baby. You are the actor in the life of Christ, you. You are the person making it happen in the world. You are not just a member of a crowd that's against a bunch of things. 
That's the poorest description of any religion that there could be. You are an actor in the work of the Holy Spirit. Not just our confirmandi, but each and every one of us were here today. And it's why we're here today, and that's why the powerful symbol at the end of Mass is that we go out, we take this to the world, and we make something happen in our families, and where we work, among the people that we love, among the people that are challenging to us. And maybe sometimes you feel really deflated, and you're not sure it's going anywhere, and you wonder about the whole thing and whether you're even proud of it or whatever, you think about that folk singer. Get that fire burning in your belly, baby, because the game ain't over yet. Let's stand together now. Let's pray the words of the Apostles' Creed that define our our baptism, all that we believe and all we do. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, our faith tells us that God cares for us, hears our prayers, and on this day, Let us bring our prayers before the loving presence of our God. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, for communities who worship in great cathedrals and in the poorest of churches, that every church may become a place of openness and welcome, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer the violence of this world, especially the people in Ukraine, for the safe return of all who serve in our military, for their families who long for their return, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders in government, especially our representatives, that they will listen to the stories of immigrant brothers and sisters and work towards just and compassionate immigration reform, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people, as we begin a new year of religious education, for parents and godparents, catechists and religious leaders who are called to witness their faith to the young, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin and our book of intentions, for healing, strength, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially William Antoletti, whose funeral mass is on Tuesday, September 20th at 9.30 a.m., and for all those who mourn the loss of someone they love, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we pray especially for the people of the parish and the intentions of John and Linda Platt, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring all of our prayers before you today. We pray them in the name of Jesus and the power of the Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, let us join our voices in singing Take Our Bread, which can be found in your music program. Again, that's Take Our Bread.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, arranged the changing of the times and the seasons, but you formed us in your likeness. You set us over the whole world to serve you, our Creator, and to rule over all creatures. And so, with all of creation, we praise you as we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand together now, we pray for the building of all God's kingdom and the words the Lord taught us to pray each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. To each other we extend a sign of God's own peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. As we are receiving the Eucharist in our church today, invite those who join us online to also be one in our sharing of this sacrament together. Please open your music program and join in singing today's communion hymn, Simple Faith.
Would you like to learn more about the Bible? A new program is beginning here at Sacred Hearts. Learn to better understand the Bible, pray, and be inspired by the Word of God. See the bulletin today for more information on how to join this program. Religious education is beginning soon. All registrations are online this year and all children must be registered prior to the first day of class. See the religious education page in the bulletin for complete information. On Sunday, September 25th, our Music at the Basilica series welcomes our own Ashley Bell and fellow artists for a magical evening of music from Spain titled Spanish Nights. The concert is free and begins at 5 p.m. We will celebrate our first St. Francis Blessing of the Animals this year on Saturday, October 1st at 10 a.m. The blessing takes place right in front of our Basilica Church. Pets of all sizes and shapes are welcome to the celebration. Thank you for praying with us today. Each week our bulletin is full of upcoming events and activities happening here at Sacred Hearts. Please take home a copy. So we've got a lot of things going on to help you in that becoming more passionate in our faith. So you can study the Bible, you can bring your dog to get blessed, you can come listen to music, beautiful music. There's something truly for everyone. And where are all our confirmandi today? Can I ask all the confirmation kids? Would you stand up, please? All the here today with us to be confirmed this year. Whoa. You know, you know what the message is going to be, right? The message is get that fire burning in your belly, baby. <laughs> Let's stand with them before they kill me. <laughs> Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with these sacraments, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the way that we live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. With may God bless us now and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thank you, God. Have a great day, everyone. Go and live your faith, and we'll see our confirmation class over in the bottom of the school in just a couple of minutes. Have a wonderful day. Our sending forth hymn this morning can be found in your music program. Please sing and sing with us, Blessed Be the Lord. Once again, that's Blessed Be the Lord.